This is defending the Immaculate. Together, we defend the honor of our Blessed Mother. Mary as the new Eve. If Our Lady is the new Eve, does that make her immaculately conceived? Yes, that's what I'm going to be arguing in this video today. First of all, why would Mary being the new Eve make her immaculate? That is, make her free from sin, an individual who never committed a sin through her earthly life and who was conceived without the stain of original sin. So let's look at this. Why, if Mary is the new Eve, why would this make her immaculate? Okay, number one, Eve, you know, in Genesis, our first mother, she was created without sin. Obviously, she walked with God in the garden. So Eve was the sinless handmaid of sinless Adam, at least in the beginning, in the beginning of Genesis. And so, if Mary, if Mary is the new Eve, then she will have Eve's best qualities. She certainly won't be worse than her or less perfect than her, right? And so obviously, that means if Eve was without sin, Mary is going to be without sin if she is the new Eve. And when we think of Christ, the new Adam, as the new Adam, he is so immeasurably greater than the first Adam, which St. Paul compares. St. Paul says Christ is the new Adam. If he's the new Adam and he's so much greater than the original Adam, then if Mary is the new Eve, we should be thinking of her being greater to a kind of degree like Christ. Obviously, not the same degree because Our Lady is, is not divine. But we certainly, if Mary is the new Eve, then she is going to be way greater than Eve, way holier than Eve, way more special than Eve. Okay? And finally, the first Adam and Eve, they fell together. You know, when Eve picked the forbidden fruit and she gave some to Adam, at that moment, humanity fell. Now, if Mary is the new Eve, then together with Christ, she shares in the victory. You know, Eve shared in the fall in a big way, in a participatory way. And if Eve is, if Mary is the new Eve, then together with Christ, we should expect her to be above sin and above Satan. Just as the first Adam and the first Eve were together, together committing sin and therefore falling under Satan's grasp. So I hope you can see here, if Mary is the new Eve, if scripture sees Mary as the new Eve, then that would make her immaculate. That would make her free. That would mean that she's free from sin, created without sin and living a sinless life. If she is the new Eve. Now, in the second part of this video, like in the whole of this series, I look at the evidence. Where is the evidence for Mary being the new Eve? We've already said if Mary is the new Eve, then it flows that she's immaculate. Where's the evidence? First of all, Genesis 3.15. Almighty God says to the evil one, I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. And I'm focusing on the, on the first part. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. So, there's a parallel being made here between Eve and Mary, right? Um, God is talking to the serpent and he's talking about the woman. But he's not talking about Eve because Eve's seed did not crush the head of Satan, right? But Virgin Mary's seed, Jesus Christ, and literally her seed because there was no male intervention, our Lord came entirely from the Virgin Mary. So definitely he is rightly being described as her seed. So this verse here, Genesis 3.15, is talking about a future, a future second Eve. And that, as we know, is Our Lady. Next piece of evidence, the entire Cana narrative. I'm talking about the wedding feast of Cana. 
So, at the wedding feast of Cana, the wedding feast of Cana is in the second chapter of St. John's Gospel. And St. John, in his Gospel, the first chapter begins with, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The first chapter of John is deliberately echoing the first chapter of Genesis. That's clear. It sounds very much like Genesis. And it's because John is doing a recapitulation of Genesis. It's like Genesis, but it's something new, it's something greater. And so the first chapter of John's Gospel is, is like the first chapter of Genesis. It's a recapitulation of creation. It's talking about creation from a new perspective. And it's talking about a renewed creation because it talks about the baptism of Christ in the Jordan, which is the beginnings of a new creation, putting right the created order. Then we get to the second chapter. We get to the second chapter. In Genesis, Eve is referred to as the woman. Only at the end is she named Eve. Throughout Genesis, throughout the chapters relating to her creation and then the fall, she is the woman. And so all of a sudden, in the second chapter of John, just after we've had that chapter about the creation and the renewal of creation, we then get a chapter where there is our Lord Jesus talking to the woman, referring to her as, O oh woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Or as some translations have it, O oh woman, what is that to me and to you? My hour has not yet come. There is a deliberate parallel here in John's second chapter between, well, it's a reversal of the fall. At the fall, we had Adam being aided and abetted by Eve. In the second chapter of John, we have the new Adam being aided and abetted by the new Eve. Because we have here, it's a kind of temptation in a way, isn't it? Um, Our Lady is suggesting, just as Eve suggested to Adam to eat the fruit, Our Lady is suggesting to the new Adam to begin the work of redemption. And it seems as if, at her suggestion, he begins. He begins the work of the work of redemption. So it reverses the dynamic of the fall with the new Eve cooperating with the new Adam to open the hour, to bring about the hour, to hasten towards the hour, the hour of the cross, the hour of the redemption. So that entire Canaan narrative is presenting Virgin Mary as a new Eve. And again, it's repeated. That trope of John comes about again in his 19th chapter when we have the cross, the wood of the cross. Our Lord is hanging on the wood of the cross and he sees his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near. And he says to his mother, woman, behold your son. Here again is the use of that word woman, not of disrespect, of course not, but it's echoing this image of Our Lady as Eve, who, as I said, is known as woman in the book of Genesis. And so we have another instance here. And at the foot of the cross, we have, we have an Adam, our Lord. We have an Eve, Virgin Mary. And we have the tree. We have the cross there, a tree also. There's another parallel there. And in this time, our Lord is conquering through that tree. Not, uh, it's not Adam being defeated by the tree. It's our Lord conquering through the tree. So we have another reversal. It's a continuation of that reversal at Cana, really. And then in the book of Revelation, we have the Virgin Mary as the new Eve. And this is going to tie in to the verse below. I'll read the verse below first. Talking about Eve's name. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And in Revelation we read, Then the dragon was angry with the woman, and he went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and bear the testimony to Jesus. And who are they? They are the living, spiritually speaking. They are the living, right? 
They're in the state of grace. So the woman's offspring are those who are spiritually alive, spiritually alive, the disciples of Christ, the baptized. So the Virgin Mary here is paralleling Eve. Our Lady is now the mother of all the living in the order of grace. So she is here, the new Eve. And finally, in St. Luke's Gospel, we hear, we hear that loud cry of St. Elizabeth, Blessed are you among women. That's describing all women. And clearly, it's Eve is included among women. And so this verse also is showing that Our Lady is greater than Eve, above Eve. And as I showed on the first slide, if she's greater than Eve, if she is the new Eve, if she is a second superior Eve, she's at least going to be as great as the first. She's going to be free from sin. She is going to be immaculate. May Our Lady Immaculate intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.